The day of the course has finally come, and Maqsood is readying himself for the big day. Despite earlier reassurances from his older brother Harun, Maqsood is still nervous about how the day will turn out. My main anxiety was, um, was how I'm going to be perceived by the people. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't grown much of a beard. I, I don't wear it all. But I thought, I re really, the moment I heard of Al Kautar, I thought it was another one where you got brothers writing down as much as possible. Uh, my anxiety, to be honest, was how, what people would think of me, because not only did I go there to learn, I also went there to meet people. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't know many brothers in um, in Islam in that deen. So I really actually, thought, and I was going there on my own, so I was really scared more or less to know what, what people might think of me am I in that right frame of mind have I reached a position where I can go into that class and learn what I'm learning you know have I have I learnt enough so to be honest I, di I didn't think I knew enough so currently we're on our way to UEL where the talk is going to be placed I'm really excited because uh, I looked at the internet and I read up about what the talk is going to be about and uh, Uthman, uh, the, the, two khali the two Khalifs and Hassan. So yeah, pretty excited. Um, got my notes, got my pens, everything ready. Uh, let's just hope we can get there and let's hope it's, it's going to be fun hopefully. It's uh, quite a long course throughout the whole day. But uh, let's see how things go. It should be, quite, it should be very exciting. The people who are teaching the course they, they teach in a very Western manner, in the sense of they, in a modern text, in a modern format. So I'm, I'm pretty excited because when you learn about history, you can't really relate to it. So in this sort of course, I'm trying to look for a form of relation where I can relate my day-to-day -day activity with how the, uh, how the Sahabas lived during the time of the Prophet or after the time of the Prophet. So I'm, I'm quite excited to know what, what their method of teaching is going to be but overall I just hope that I can learn something from this and that the how they deliver the story or the message is in a manner where I can understand it you know um, hopefully they don't complicate things if you um, develop yourself as a religion or as a message to the rest of the world your way of teaching your way of seeking knowledge will differ as well right will be well has to adapt to the need of the certain people so there are no restrictions in that there's no restriction in how to seek knowledge besides of having respect for knowledge and uh, investing in knowledge and concentrating and being sincere and other um and other uh, fundaments of seeking knowledge otherwise there are no restrictions in that as long i mean what is very beautiful to mention is um you would see if you look to the past that uh, location and culture decides how knowledge is being seeked i mean if you know that during the communist periods, and we talk, we just talked about Sheikh Albani in Albania, that for about 70 years, when communists, you know, did not allow religion to explore any kind of religion, um, I met people, Hafal of Quran al Karim, who taught the Quran by lip reading under the ground in a cafe. Uh, the previous teachers that I had, they're not, uh, they didn't quite, I didn't quite connect with them because some of them, you know, they spoke in a foreign accent. I'm not trying to be against that or anything like that but speaking of very foreign accent it's quite difficult to understand you know some of their grammar and um, some of the language that they use not only that most courses that I've been through it's like they're reading from a book just reading out from the book uh, they're not quite explaining they're not quite you know showing a relationship they're not quite giving you a teaching lesson this but it's just a, you know a rule book which I didn't quite fancy it's definitely an ability to to contextualize to our reality, to modern, modern society. And if teachers are more able to do that, then students are able to learn and better themselves. To be honest, I'm only in this course to better myself in Islam, you know. Recently, just thinking about Islam and thinking about the whole idea of judgment and paradise, we all just want to do this to please Allah. So hopefully any, anything that I learn from this day is, will get me closer to Allah, inshallah, and will make me a better person, hopefully. And I hope that the teachers can aid me in my journey of being a better person.
Alcantar courses are held over a weekend and are intensive in nature. They are held in a variety of venues around the country as well as abroad. Everything about the course seems to impress Maqsoud, who prior to this had only experienced small circles without much organisation to them. What do you think about the course notes? I'm really excited. I mean, if you look at this, it's really intense. As in, the contents page, they cover almost everything about Uthman, starting from his birth, when he was born, and um, everything about him, really. I mean, even just when he came into the fold, I thought, do I have to pay? Do I have to pay for this? Is this the? Did I get the right booklet? But uh, this is actually more than what I expected. You know, it's a lot more in depth. And no, no, the other other notes were in small binders, plastic binders, and they're probably collecting rust in my room somewhere. But no, no, this is this is something pretty amazing. Um, and how it's broken down, you know, it's really good, really good. The course is about to begin, and Maqsoud takes his seat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you, inshallah, to the course. The process of learning is helped by the fact that the teachers are all fluent in English and able to communicate on the level of the students. The Sheikh himself, Bilal, I became infatuated by how he would communicate with the listeners. I think the Sheikh was just amazing. Um, he he kept, kept me on, on the point. I, I felt like he was talking to me because it was um, he always kept me from not deviating or not um, becoming distracted. I was never distracted, and that, which was surprising. My attention span is very small. And uh, when I was told it was a seven hour intensive course, I haven't, I haven't been into one which was seven hours. I was really scared. I pumped myself with, up with as much caffeine as possible to prepare myself for the talk. I thought it was going to be a long lecture because the previous talks I've been, uh, two hour talks, um, I tend to doze off. Or I, I just lose concentration. The moment I get my concentration back, I'm lost. And what the Sheikh is teaching me, I, I can't follow. So that was a big anxiety. But uh, Subhan, I, I kept my concentration and he kept on uh, engaging the audience. He wasn't where he was just sitting and talking. He kept on engaging us. Every, t every so often he would make us stand and massage the person on the left and keep and massage him. So he wakes us up because some people are drowsing off. So he kept on, kept us awake, kept us alive, and our blood pumping, and I found that amazing. I, I can't believe I made it through the whole seven hours, not falling asleep or anything like that. Despite the class being quite engaging and even entertaining, break time could possibly be spent alone, as Maqsood did not come with anyone else, and this is something that worried him even before coming. I don't really go to these kind of courses, and the, before I even went, I, someone told me, you know, there's brother with togs and brother with beers. I got scared. No, I thought they'll be really judgmental, and I thought that I'll be a, a cast down, call it a hierarchy in my mind, and I thought I was at the lowest of the low. It's break time, and everyone is going off in groups of prior acquaintances. For a moment, it seemed like he may well be eating alone. But before long, he meets another student who asks him about how he's finding the course. He was so down to earth and the brother was talking to me about all the things that he's been through, that why he's doing our cultural course, how he's changing his life, the mistakes, one of the mistakes he's made were very similar to mine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my perception of brothers is one lies, I feel really, really guilty for what I thought mm -hmm. of them, but now Alhamdulillah it's changed. Brother Maksud is typical to uh, many brothers in that situation, or many sisters even, that when you're coming into any new environment, you have certain fears. Because as human beings, we have a fear of change, regardless of what that environment be. Be it starting a new job, starting a new course at university, attending an Islamic conference, or st st attending an Islamic course, for example, Al-Kawthar for the first time. So I think that's a human issue to do with engaging anything new, Al-Kawthar aside. Anyone coming to Al-Kawthar, we recognize that, because we were all there once. I was once on the other side, you know, my first course, I remember it still today. Um, so what we try to do is we try to create as welcome environment as possible, you know, we have people at reception welcoming uh, all the students, new and returning uh, students. Then, alhamdulillah, we have a team that seeks to try to look at new faces, identify them, go give them salam, offer them a cup of tea, etc. Try to create that feel. And the idea ultimately is, is that as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tied us together with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, inna man mu'minuna ikhwa. So we know we are a brotherhood uh, and a sisterhood. So what we try to do is, you know, foster that. So when people come here as a student base, the idea is, inshallah, that they engage together. 
that new person, inshallah, we hope that somebody reaches out to them. Sometimes the, what the sheikhs do is they will start the class by asking each person to introduce themselves to the person sat next to them. And that makes it a bit easier. So if you're a first timer, you meet Brother Fulan ibn Fulan and Brother Muhammad, and you're like the worst case scenario, you might know two people then. Um, and what we typically find though is when people do come, and I found this with Brother Maksud actually, he said he found so many people here that he knew that he didn't know they attended Al Kotha. As the day progresses, the students learn more and more about the subject in greater detail. However, it is not only the subject matter that is taught. I saw there was a strong emphasis on action and implementing what they have just learnt in their own lives and communities. The brother came on board. He, was, he gave a story about a sister where the sister was talking about her experience. But she came to Islam, she's a revert to Islam, her and her friend. Her friend uh, was married to a Muslim but she went through some abuse, divorced her husband and went back to her family. But her family were Christian and were forcing her to be a Christian. She turned to her friend for help. And her friend didn't give that help. She, she, her friend described it as giving, showing a blind eye to what her friend need. And to be honest, at the end of the day, what happened ended up happening is the sister, she became a Christian against her will and she committed suicide. We expect our students to get involved, or how we want our students to get involved, is we do our bit, which is to create the opportunity, and then we seek to, inshallah, in, you know, inculcate a level of God consciousness within themselves to think, Regardless of which organization is creating the opportunity, on a personal level, I want to get involved. So when a new student comes, inshallah, we hope to mobilize them, to inspire them, to think, you know, when I go back, I want to do something. As the course ended, I saw that it had a profound impact on Maqsood. What I've learned has helped, helped me apply that to, um, to this idea of mercy mission. And I really want to get involved in mercy mission. And inshallah, I'm going to try my best to hopefully raise money and this will show to me that I'm making a difference to my own life. And this is evidence that I am changing and evidence that I am, what, I'm, what I've learned, I'm able to put into my everyday situation.